everybody, I am that nursing prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking all about obstructive shock. So let's get into it. So as you can probably guess by the word obstructive, we're talking about shock that is caused by some sort of blockage. So what is happening in the body? Some sort of blockage occurs, which ends up decreasing the amount of venous return we have which increases the afterload of the heart, which decreases our cardiac output. And when we have low cardiac output, we have low blood flow and therefore low oxygen being distributed to our tissues and our organs, right? And that's what shock is when we're not getting enough blood flow and oxygen to our vital organs. So there's two main causes. It could be either an extrinsic mechanical compression issue or an interference with ventricular emptying. So it could be a couple of different things, but the most common examples of each. For number one, a tension pneumothorax. So sometimes when people who are on ventilators, mechanical ventilators, they can have something called a tension pneumothorax, where they're kind of holding on to a lot of the air and they're not allowed to release it. Instead of being, you know, a two-way valve in and out, it gets trapped in that space and it causes a lot of pressure to build up and then that in turn decreases the venous return to the heart okay another cause would be something like a blockage like a PE so with a PE right we have a blood clot right and that gets stuck in pulmonary circulation and that decreases that blood flow so again decreasing venous return so two potential causes, but they all end up doing the same thing, right? So they all end up making it so that the heart cannot pump as efficiently and cannot distribute the blood throughout the body the way it's supposed to. And because there are potential multiple causes of this, we do a lot of testing because we need to figure out, okay, what's the cause? Because depending on the cause, the treatment's going to be a little bit different. So some things they might want to do to determine the cause would be things like a CT scan or an ECG, seeing where this problem is originating. Um, of course, we're going to get our blood gases. They might want to do a BNP. Remember, our BNP levels show us when the heart is in distress or when there's been damage to the heart. Lactate levels. So having high lactate levels is when our body is not getting uh, our tissues uh, perfused as well. So it's kind of indicative that there's a problem with the oxygenation of our tissues. So you don't want to have those, but we'll be looking at that for these people. Um, of course, a good old fashioned CBC, we need to know what we're starting with. And then coagulation studies, they might want to look for platelets, they might want to do a D-dimer, especially if they're suspecting something like a PE. Our signs and symptoms that our patient's going to present with are going to be kind of like those classic signs of shock, but also related to the cause of that. So things like altered level of consciousness, they could be dizzy, lightheaded, they could be confused, they could be drowsy or unconscious. All of these things are related to the lack of oxygen to the brain, right? Algeria, so little or even no urine output can happen because the kidneys aren't functioning well because they're not being well perfused. Tachycardia, tachypnea, hypotension, those are kind of those classic signs of shock that we would expect to have. And also think about what's causing these issues. If they have a pneumothorax, if they have a pulmonary embolism, they're definitely going to be having these classic symptoms. Things like chest pain, right? Um, shortness of breath, um, those distended jugular veins. So remember, when these veins are bulging, they shouldn't be, right? When these veins are bulging, what it's telling us is that our heart is working real, real hard to try and fix a problem. Our heart is under a lot of pressure right now, and we're seeing that reflected in those jugular veins. And then if it is caused by something like a pneumothorax, we're going to have decreased or even absent lung sounds. Our nursing interventions for these patients are going to include watching those vitals, right? So looking for the hypotension, the tachycardia, the tachypnea, um, monitoring their O2, all of that. Of course, we're going to put in a Foley so we can get a more accurate INO. We might want to give um, a blood transfusion, so plaque red blood cells, platelets, even plasma. Um, oxygen, they're definitely going to need oxygen. 
They might even prefer to put them on a ventilator. We're not going to place them, but we'll monitor afterwards. They might need chest tubes and then even surgery. So we would help uh, prep for surgery and then um, post-operatively. So depending on what's going on, right, um, they might have a couple of different options. Another thing we're going to do is give medications. So the first thing I wanted to talk about is IV fluids. So you're going to give a crystalloid, and I put a little asterisk next to it because I wanted to make sure I mentioned we have to be very, very careful about it. So when somebody is in shock, one of the first things you think is give them fluids, push fluids, because that's going to help bring their blood pressure up. And it will. That's great. But remember what's causing this shock, right? There's a problem with the heart. So we have to be very careful that we're not giving too much fluids and actually making the problem worse. So we have to be careful. And sometimes they might even prefer, instead of pushing fluids, that you replace that with a blood transfusion. So it kind of depends, but we have to be very careful when it comes to administering our IV fluids. And of course, those meds to bring up that blood pressure, like your phenylephrine, your norepinephrine, and your vasopressin. So constrict those blood vessels to increase that blood pressure. Patients who are experiencing obstructive shock are very acutely ill, they are unstable, and they will likely be in like the ICU setting. And that's my video on obstructive shock. I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And if not, I'll see you on the next one.